Hello everyone, Tim and Gaming here, and today I have the pleasure of bringing you my very first FIFA 13 tutorial Q&A video. Now, if you guys missed the FIFA video I uploaded last week, basically what this video is going to be is just an opportunity for you guys to ask me questions on you know, generic FIFA information. So... I don't want questions on, you know, how to defend better because I've done tutorials showing you how to do that. You know, this is just basic questions and you'll get an idea of what I'm sort of looking for with the questions I answer in this video. But I am planning to do several of these. So if you do have any more questions that I don't cover in this video, don't hesitate to either send me a direct message or leave a comment in the video here and I'll check through and get them in for the next video. But to start off, I have a question that I've had a lot and that is... What is your favourite formation in FIFA? Now, I see this question so, so many times because obviously, as you guys know, I've uploaded quite a number of FIFA formation tutorials where I go through the strengths and weaknesses of every formation and, you know, enable you guys to make the choice for yourself because there isn't really one great formation that dominates all the others there's probably about four or five formations which are all roughly equal and it's all up to personal preference on what you want to play so for example my two favorite formations are 352 and 4231 I play 4-2-3-1 in seasons and the 4-2-3-1 in Ultimate Team plays slightly differently and I don't quite like the changes they've done to it so I play 3-5-2 in Ultimate Team normally and the reason why I like those formations is I like to be nice and solid in the middle of the park. So both of those have two defensive midfielders, which is very, very important. I like to be nice and tight. And so they have lots of people at the back. They can drop in, fill the spaces manually, which is how I like to defend. But at the same time, they've got players upfield and centre attacking midfield in particular who is in position to benefit from counter-attacking. And I always like to counter-attack. So... If I was pushed into an answer, I'd say those two are my favourite formations. But I always err on the side of caution when I come out and say that I prefer this over the other. Because formations in FIFA are all down to personal preference. You know, If you prefer to play with wingers and just get it wide all the time, 4-3-3 might be the formation for you. Or 4-1-2-1-2. You know, you know, there are many, many good formations. But if I had to play a game right now and had to choose a formation, those would be the two that I'd decide between. The next question is a, another very, very common one, and that is, what is your favourite team? And this is another question that I have a little bit of hesitation answering definitively, because you know, what I always like to say with FIFA is that the major part of enjoying this game is through trying lots of different teams. I could never play all day as Real Madrid. I'll just be so bored, it's untrue. So I always like to mix it up. And I, I play with teams regularly like Borussia Dortmund, FC Bayern, the German national team. I like playing as Spurs and Arsenal, England, Italy, Portugal. You know, I'd quite happily rotate between all of those teams and probably 10 or 15 more. But if I was playing a pro player and I had to pick one team, I'd probably go for FC Bayern. And it's really, really tight between Bayern and the German national team. But the reason why I go for Bayern is they have the same core players as the national team. So they still have players like Lahm, they've got Neuer in goal, they've got Schweinsteiger, they've got Gomez up front, you know, they've got Muller, they've got Kroos, you know, lots of great players. But Bayern have a little bit of extra flair that the German national team don't have and you know the German national team is still an incredible team on FIFA and they're probably my second or third favourite team but if you look at FC Bayern they've got Frank Ribéry and they've got Arjen Robben on the wings and they've got Mario Gomez as a target man and as you guys know I really like to play counter-attacking I like to move the ball up the pitch quickly and these sorts of players are ideal because if I'm under pressure, I can go direct to Gomez and he can hold the ball up for a bit, then lay it wide to one of the quick wingers and I can launch an attack. Or if a winger's in space, I can just pass it straight to him, run away. You know, And then you've got Schweinsteiger in the middle of the field. You play Muller and Kroos. I like to play Kroos as a CDM. So, you know, so many players who can pass the ball. Lots of different attacking opportunities. They're a great team. So if I had to choose one, I'd probably say Bayern Munich is my favourite team on FIFA. But... Let's move on to the next question. The next question is, what in-game tactics do you use? Now, I, I see this question a lot, and I've given the same answer for a long, long time. 99% of the time, I will use defensive mentality, counter-attacking, and team pressing. And I'm going to run through and explain them all individually here. 
Now, the reason why I play defensive mentality is because, like I mentioned earlier, the way I defend. I like to defend by having men behind the ball and then I manually micro the players around to try and plug gaps and then when my opponent makes a mistake, I can swoop in, get the ball and then I have those players upfield in the positions ready to launch that counter-attack. So, when you set your team on defensive, the only thing that really changes is your CDM sit a little bit deeper, only about five metres deeper, there's not really much difference there. But the major difference is your fullbacks are much less likely to charge up the field on their own volition. Whenever you play on normal or attacking, it's very, very likely you'll see one or possibly sometimes even two of your fullbacks advance up the field without you asking for it. And sometimes they will get, you know, 20, 30 metres into your opponent's half. Now, when you're on the attack, this is fantastic because it gives you an option very, very early to get the ball out wide and get it in the box. But on the flip side of that, if you lose the ball in midfield and you get caught on the counter-attack, you are so, so exposed at the back because your full-backs are absolutely miles forward. And it doesn't matter who you've got at full-back, if your opponent is clinical on that break, they won't be able to get back and help out in defence. So I like to put it on defensive mentality because it's not overly defensive. You know, you're not sitting back too deep, but your CDMs are a little bit deeper, so you're nice and tight in the middle and your full-backs aren't as likely to go barreling up field. If you do want them to get up the field, you can manually send them on a run with L1 or LB, depending on what system you play. You can send them up the pitch and you give them the ball and you can go on from there. So you don't really lose anything in an attacking sense, but you gain a lot defensively. And the additional bonus of having your CDM sit a little bit deeper is that the vast majority of the time they're going to be in more space. If you have them up the field, you might think that's a bonus, but... The main role of a CDM in an attack is just to marshal the play. So they get the ball in, they have a look, get in a bit of space, try and pass it forward. If not, just move it along the pitch, look for the opening. So you're looking for them to be in space. And then when you move forward, your CDMs will advance up the field. So the vast majority of the time, I will put it on straight to defensive mentality. It doesn't matter even if I'm playing against a bronze team and I have my glorious La Liga side out. I will still play defensive, not because I have a defensive mindset, but the way I play suits that mentality much better. And tied in with this is the team pressing counter-attack one. You know, counter-attack is very, very self-explanatory. All that it means is when you win that ball back, your players are much more willing and much more urgent to get forward in that first first five or ten seconds after you win the ball back and this is very very key because like I mentioned several times I sit deep when I defend I invite my opponent onto me with men behind the ball and then when he makes a mistake I swoop in and take the ball off him now what this means is the vast majority of the time I win the ball back I'm normally about 30 meters out from my own goal my opponent has advanced up the pitch a substantial way and there are massive spaces in behind for me to exploit so by putting it on defensive counter-attack I can exploit these chances very very quickly and when you think about it I like to play 4-2-3-1 with two wingers or 3-5-2 with a center attacking mid so there's always going to be someone up the field in space for me to lay that ball to and just like with a click of the fingers I can launch an attack when a few seconds before I was sitting on the edge of my area defending deep so counter-attacking is pretty self-explanatory the one that I perhaps need to explain a little bit more is team pressing now team pressing and high pressure are both options in the defensive selection list whenever you do the quick tactics and they are not the same thing I used to run high pressure and what I used to find was my players would be a little bit too aggressive on pushing so every now and again you just see a centre mid go absolutely barreling out of position to try and win the ball and occasionally it would work and he'd win the ball and it'd be fantastic and he'd launch the counter attack but if that player missed his tackle or the attacker does a nice bit of skill and goes round him all of a sudden you've got a gaping hole in your midfield and when you've got a gaping hole in a player out of position you have to pull another player out of position to fill that hole which in turn leaves another hole and you begin to see the problem spiral out of control so Team pressing is a slightly more restrained version of high pressure. It's more of just like a team push up the field. So there's a collective pressure to you know, close down the space that an opponent has without that suicidal barreling of high pressure. The only time I'd really put high pressure on is, for example, if I'm losing by a goal with 10 minutes or so to go, because then you don't have time to sit back and let the opponent come to you. You need that ball back to try and score a goal. So that's the only time I'd put it on that. So that's the quick tactics I use. I use defensive counter-attack team pressing. And for my style of play, I think that's a very, very good combination. So 
with that out the way, let's move to the next question, which is what controller settings do you use? Now, the vast majority of my controller settings are set on semi-assisted, and I'll explain why here. The fully assisted passing and crossing on FIFA really isn't useful at all because firstly, you're not going to improve as a player if the computer does everything for you because it doesn't matter how hard you power up the cross or how softly you power it up, it'll still go roughly in the same place. So you're not learning how to get the right power on your shots or the right weight on your passes and what have you. So you're not improving. But in addition to this, the fully assisted passing has to be the most ham-fisted mechanic I've seen in a while because many, many times it will randomly overhit a cross for no reason or a five-yard ball will go astray and go to an opponent. You'll be sitting there thinking, come on, you know, he's a professional footballer. He's not going to misplace a five-yard ball there. So that's why I don't use the fully assisted stuff. But on the flip side of that, using fully manual controls on a console is very very finicky and it takes a lot of practice to get it down but even if you do spend a lot of time practicing and I did I spent a substantial amount of time on manual controls you know seeing if it was more effective but what I've really seen is manual controls really don't work on a console because it's too hard to be precise with an analog stick when you think about it you know an analog stick is a very very imprecise measurement you know it's a very imprecise tool that's why in games like call of duty on console they have aim assist because it's impossible to accurately aim with an analog stick against a fast moving target and in a game like fifa which is incredibly fast paced and relies on precise passing and you know, precise control and all of that. Having fully manual controls really isn't the best option because it's impossible to be as precise as you need to be to get the ball where you want it. And it's not because you're playing badly or you're a bit ham-fisted. It's just because the tools you have at your disposal aren't up to scratch. You know, if you were playing Fee from PC with a mouse and a keyboard, which is much more precise and you can very, very precisely indicate what you want to do with a mouse, you don't really have to have assisted controls because you can be precise enough with the mouse. With the console controller, it makes much more sense to use semi-assisted because it gives you that extra one or two percent leeway that you need to ensure that the controller's own lack of functionality doesn't screw you over. But at the same time, you're not being baby stepped through like you are with fully assisted. So overall, semi-assisted is a very, very nice balance. The only thing I would heartily recommend you put on manual is the player auto switch mechanic because that is just so ham-fisted it is untrue. The number of times you see the computer switch to a different player when a player is standing there about to make an interception and the computer will switch away or you're jockeying a player and he'll switch or you're running back into position to cover a run and it'll switch to someone completely irrelevant and then you'll run him out of position because you're not expecting the switch and it just leaves you to be screwed over through no fault of your own. So turn that to fully manual. The only thing you have to be careful with that is crosses because it won't switch the player for you and you can set it on just air balls but I still think that's a little bit dodgy so just go for fully manual and whenever a cross is coming just remember to hit L1 and that's all you need and there'll be no problems there but with that out of the way let's move on to the final question now this again is the question that I have a lot and it's posted in a variety of different forms but the general gist of the question is why do you make your tutorials the length they are because I get a number of comments or you know, questions asking me why I have the tutorial set to the length they are and I always respond with the same answer, you know, you guys who watch my FIFA tutorials are here for one reason and one reason only, you're here to improve at FIFA. Now it doesn't matter what skill level you are, you could be a complete beginner or you could be an advanced player who makes tons of money off the, the, the FIFA gambling feature and you're just here to you know, improve your defence a little bit so you're checking out my defence tutorial. Regardless of what skill level you are, you are still here to improve as a FIFA player. I would much rather provide you with too much information than not enough. And I say this all the time in every single video. Now, I would much rather see three or four comments saying you've gone into a little bit too much analysis here than seeing ten comments asking, I don't understand this, what do you mean by this, why have you done this here? So that's the first thing I really want to get across to you guys. If you understand the technique that I'm explaining halfway through the video, absolutely fantastic, it means you've picked it up. But imagine if you're a new FIFA player, 
Imagine if this is a technique you've never heard of before. Those extra three or four minutes of analysis are going to be absolutely crucial to you understanding it. So I'm always going to err on the side of more analysis than less analysis because as, as well, there aren't too many FIFA tutorials on the internet, you know, especially if you look around on YouTube, there's really Patrick HD Gaming who does very, very good tutorials. And then that's, that's about it. There's not really a guy who focuses on that. So people who come to this channel come to this channel to look at the tutorials and to learn and to improve the people who say you know they're too long or whatever i always like this analogy of they're someone who goes to school asks a teacher a question and then stops listening halfway through the answer you know if you can't be bothered to sit through a six minute video to help you improve at fifa why are you here you know you are watching a fifa tutorial to improve and I, I provide these tutorials to help you guys get better and through the responses I get I I'm assuming and correct me if I'm wrong but I'm assuming that I have helped a lot of you guys out and you know sitting here for seven eight minutes to learn a technique which can potentially help you win every single FIFA game you ever play you know that is not a lot of time and you know I could understand you know if my tutorials were 35 minutes long but the vast majority of my videos are under 10 minutes you know the only ones that are over that are very very in-depth ones so for example my corner kick tutorial I think that was about 12 or 13 minutes long but in that tutorial I went through three corner techniques what you're looking to do how you perform it what your opponent's thinking how he's looking to counter how you would counter his counter with the third technique you know i've gone through a lot of information if i condense that down too much it's going to be a bit of an information overload and you won't pick things up so i'd much rather spend that extra couple of minutes making sure that i explain exactly what i want and exactly what i want you guys to understand because that will save me so much time in follow-up questions and in the end it will mean that you guys thoroughly thoroughly understand the technique that i'm trying to explain so guys, thank you so, so much for listening to the video. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've had some of your questions answered because, you know, I've been seeing a lot of these questions over the last month or so and I just wanted to get a video out there to answer as many as possible. But if you haven't had your question answered or you've thought of a new one, don't hesitate to leave it in the comments and I'll cover that in the next video. But once again, guys, thank you so, so much for watching and have a great day.